Good morning, everyone. My name is Noah Newman. I'm an editor here with Strip Till Farmer. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar with Locus Agricultural Solutions for this digital demonstration on Locus Ag's Carbon Now Carbon Farming Program. Today's presenter is Travis Kraft. He is the director of row crops for Locus Ag. He's worked in agriculture his entire life, but has really started focusing heavily on carbon and biologicals over the last five years. So today, Travis is going to talk about the agronomic benefits of using Locus Ag Biologicals, eligibility requirements for their Carbon Now program, the difference between acreage and carbon credit-based carbon farming programs, how Carbon Now is able to maintain the highest acceptance rate in the industry, and more. Before we get started with the presentation, I want to let you know we will have a Q&A session after the presentation. You might see the icon at the bottom of your screen, that Q&A icon. Click that and you could submit questions throughout the presentation. At the end, we'll go through them and uh, Travis will get those answered for you. We are also recording today's session. So if you wanna go back and rewatch it or share it with anyone, uh, feel free to do so. We'll have more details on that at the conclusion of the presentation. But hey, let's get started. Travis Kraft, take it away. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, Noah and the entire group there at, uh, at No-Till Strip-Till Farmer for uh, having us come on this morning. and. For everybody on the call, it's it's a pleasure to meet you at least virtually right now and to share a little bit about what we do here at Locus Ag through our Carbon Now program, as well as uh, details surrounding the carbon market as a whole. Um, you know, this is a this is an ever changing and evolving industry, and there are so many things happening that it's uh, that if you don't stay in the mainstream of of the the influential side and the educational side, it's hard to keep up. And, and um, the decisions that are being made this time um, or even any time of the year anymore are so crucial. So, you know, this is a large part of what we do is just really try to educate and make sure that people understand, you know, what's going on in the industry, how to be involved. Is it the best fit? Is it not the best fit? And, and, and what are the tools and opportunities available for each operation and each entity? Because not one or two are the same. So, with that, I will uh, I'll jump right into this, and then Noah, give me the thumbs up if you can still see my screen. All right, perfect. So with that, I'll give uh, just a brief <clears throat> a brief agenda and the topics of interest today. Uh, as mentioned, we are going to be looking at you know the who, what, why, and how of today's carbon markets. This will be some of a re-education and then education for folks on the call, depending on your knowledge and. Uh, overall impression of the carbon market uh, as a whole today. Um, we'll do a brief intro of, of Locus Ag, you know, where are we at, how do we fit in, you know, how do we fit into not only the, the product side, the biological side, but very much into the carbon side. And then, you know, how does that relate to what we can offer versus others in the industry may not be able to do to, you know, the, the research and the technology that Locus has brought to the table um, that has not been done in today's industry at all. And then, you know, what's it come down to? How are folks making money? How does this reflect into data? How does this get you uh, from point A to point B? And then bringing into something into your operation that uh, that allows for long-term success as well as the, the opportunity for, for a legacy concept as um, there are many things changing uh, from an operational side, but also an industry side too. Um, just a really uh, quick um, intro. I, as Noah already said, um, I've been with the company here at Locus for just over a year and two months. Um, it's pretty amazing how quickly a year goes by when you're having fun and it doesn't feel like work at all. So I have the absolute honor and pleasure of working with folks, you know, across the entire United States. And that's what makes this so unique. Um, there are so many amazing uh, growers and operators in this industry right now. And there are so many opportunities for advancement that um, I, I get the, again, the pleasure and the honor of being a part of some of these things. And, and my team does the same thing every single day as well. So uh, it's a really, really cool opportunity to be able to speak to, uh, to speak to y'all here today about that. So with that, we're going to jump into carbon markets. Now, you know, this is something that uh, most folks may or may not realize that the carbon market is not a strict system. And, and what I mean by that is depending on the, the industry as well as the geography and uh, country that you're currently presiding in, whether that be the European Union or Australia 
or the US or Canada. Uh, there, there are differences in each of those, but the, it, it, fall, it falls and it, it boils down to two main pieces. That would be compliance versus voluntary. And there's, there's nothing uh, scary about either one of those is they're very much the same definition as you would think. Compliance is you must be compliant to in incorporate or interact with the government uh, entities that are handing down specific uh, operational changes that must be made on your, your farm or your, uh, your operation or any other industry that may be in the, the carbon-based model. Now, that is not happening here in the U.S. currently, but if you look at markets like Australia or the Netherlands or the European Union, they're much more further advanced in that type of setup. And voluntary is just the same thing it would sound like. Voluntary is it's an open market. You can play ball if you choose to. But if you do play ball, there are rules and there are things that you must abide by to be a part of that voluntary system. Now, will this voluntary system evolve over time? Absolutely, it will. We are at the very infantile stage of the carbon market. Even though we've all been hearing about it for the past two or three years, only in the last 12 to 18 months has it really began to, get, to pick up steam. And that's, that's due to a whole host of things you know, within the industry itself. And, and when there are dollars and cents heading out one side of the operation and not being brought in on the other side of the operation, it becomes even more of, a, uh, of an expanded opportunity. And you know, with the prices of seed, fertility, equipment, everything else this year, uh, any, any dollar counts and every dollar and every cent needs to be utilized in the best way possible. So the voluntary market is made up of a, a vast amount of buyers and sellers, okay, as well as producers. And when you look at this, there's a chart there on your left-hand side that you know, we only, always only hear about agricultural-based carbon credits. Well, come to find out there are, there are literally over 170 different types of carbon credits in the market today. And that ranges from that entire list that you see on the left-hand side. But what's really interesting is of that entire circle, only about 10%, maybe 8% are made up by agriculture. So that tells you the opportunity that is actually within our grasp to take uh, to take advantage of what's actually going on in the market that has been being paid for for multiple, multiple years. So the, also the other thing to think about is, is each of those sections of that specific carbon credit circle are not priced the same, they, and they never will be. So when you look at the prices of carbon credits, they can actually be even low as a dollar, all the way up to $40, even some up to $80 to $90, depending on if you're compliance or voluntary. So the, the obvious answer here is that um, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And that's what's really unique about getting into something like this at this point that, that you're able to. And when you look at what are the most valuable type of credits, it's been stated over and over again that U.S., United States-based nature credits are the preferred credits because there's something, there's something tangible that you can relate to, that you can kiss it, you can touch it, you can hug it. Are you putting carbon back in the soil? How are you doing that? Well, we're utilizing a cover crop. We're utilizing cattle. We're utilizing nitrogen reduction strategies. We're utilizing these things that we call practice changes. And practice changes are extremely important once you get into a carbon-based system because that's how we advance the ball. You know, when you look at advancing the ball on your operation, it's not gonna be the same as your neighbor's operation. And one thing may not have the same effect as it does across the road. So. It's, it's, that's what brings joy to my life and to my, my professional career is that each of these things can fit differently in their own spot. But once, once we get into nature-based credits, people want to buy these. There, it was actually stated um, you know, in the recent past that, that Delta Airlines would not buy agricultural-based credits. And that was because of the chance or risk of reversal. And reversal meaning, you know what, when diesel gets cheap, I might just take an 18 inch plow out there and release everything that I just put back into the soil. And farming is an operational game. Things have to be done at times. But the fact of the matter is, if you have made the current mindset change to go towards a regenerative ag or a sustainable based operational approach, the risk of that is going to go down dramatically, significantly, in fact. And that's what's really what's really catching my eye over the last six months is there are many people making those changes currently that are tired of watching their topsoil blow away. They are tired of, of, uh, of watching all their topsoil go down the ditch because of a hard rain. 
And now, and now they've lost, whether it be seed fertility or just the overall nutrients that are in their soil. So as you can transition to or already in a, a no-till, strip-till, or a minimal-till based system, these things become much more uh, advantageous for you because now there's in dollars and cents that were not on the table previously that now are on the table for you to take advantage of. No matter what, if we are going to play in this market, everything has to be verified. And that is a key piece of why Locust sits where, they, where we do. Right now, the two main governing, governing bodies, not, not, not related to the government, but the governing bodies of this specific market are done through VERA and CAR, or Climate Action Reserve. They are, they are the gold standard to what we classify as carbon-based verification through exchange of producer, buyer, seller, and buyer. So everything has to be done through them. That, that includes all the way from soil sampling to product research to any, any type of modeling or algorithm-based um, technology. Everything has to be done through them to make sure that exchange can happen, all right? Now, I, I would imagine and, uh, and say that there are going to be more of those in the future, but right now, those are the two that, that are currently the, the, the big dogs in the, at the bowl. Um, Locust uses Vera for our verification, and, and I'm telling you, it's, it's not easy to get, to get done what we've gotten done, but that's, be, and that's a good thing. We want this to be pure, we want it to be transparent, and we want folks to understand that there are so many things that can be implemented. And there are so many things within this market that most folks just haven't realized they can take advantage of. So what does this lead to, right? You're, you've, you've worked down the, the carbon side, you know a little bit about it, you wanna get involved. You know, what, what's it gonna do for you? What's it gonna do for the, the, the planet? What's it gonna do for your community? Uh, I mean, it really starts with soil health. It starts with soil health, which leads to plant health, which leads to food quality, higher food quality, which then also leads to a longer legacy from that farming operation. The, the amount of farms and operators that will be changing hands over the next three to six years is going to be pretty stagnant, or not stagnant, but it's going to be significant, excuse me. Um, with the age ranges of current farmers and operators, there's, there's a big transition and ha transition happening right now. And, and that's part of why we're doing what we're doing to, to stay in the middle of that and, and, and uh, offer a lot of these things from the very beginning. So I know there will be some questions on this slide and I, I left it very vague to begin with, but I at least want everybody to understand where the two, the two dividing lines are currently. So why is, uh, why is Locust doing what we're doing? Okay, Locust is a product company. Uh, I'll state that again. Locust is a product company, always has been and always will be. But that doesn't mean that we can't have fun in other sectors. And what we mean by that is Locust was, was started back in 2014 by, by the, the parent company, Locust Fermentation Solutions. Ever since then, we have now grown into the six business units you see on the right-hand side. That's from agriculture to animal feed, down to natural resources and CPG ingredients. Um, in fact, our first CPG ingredient or ingredient and product was launched into Amazon here recently dealing with skin-based issues. What's really cool is that locust fermentation, it's, it's precision fermentations, it's revolving around specific microbes and microbe-based products that are uh, simple yet complex in nature, but have uh, massive impact depending on the industry that you're looking into. So, this is, this is why locust sits in a very unique position, locust fermentation, but then as you branch off into locust agriculture, now we have a full team dedicated strictly to agriculture, and then we have full teams just strictly dedicated to the other business units that you see on the right-hand side. So it's a unique company, and it's a unique system that's built around the success of our work previous to get to where we all are now. And, you know, when I when I when I've played and worked in the biological industry in my past, uh, I never saw this because there isn't something unique enough that brings locusts to the front that allows them to be in so many different things and also have an impact in so many different things, not only domestically but internationally as well. So I want to make sure people understand. Again, I'll say it again: we are a product company, but we have done enough and we have the data to prove that we can do more in the ag industry than anybody else has it here in the past. And that's what makes this special. And that's why we'll get into what carbon now represents based on these specific factors. So I'm not gonna spend much time here because 
I'm happy to take one-on-one -on -one sessions after this call because I know we got more important things to talk to around carbon, but this just tells you an overview of our product family. Family, excuse me. We're not complex. We're actually quite simple. And what I can say is that our products focus on the big three nutrients in the soil, those being N, P, and K. And when you are uh, looking to stimulate as well as enhance fertility, you can also enhance the microbial biome that's in your soil. As you inc increase the microbial biome in your soil, you increase the, the uh, um, activity as well as the specificity of how, you're, how you are wanting to operate on that ground, in that ground that you're currently you're farming in, you can then increase the amount of produce, quality, all the different things. So we want to be very specific in how we, how we, uh, we make products, but how we uh, suggest products throughout the industry. We keep it very straightforward. We're going to be looking at corn, rice, soybeans, and cotton, or we're going to be looking at peas, chickpeas, cover crops, dry beans, peanuts, anything from alfalfa to cover crops or clovers as well. So everything is specific in nature to that specific species being grown, but each of those spe specifics are then based around nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. So if you can, if you can enhance those big three, a lot of things in the soil begin to happen. And, and again, I'm not gonna get into a lot of this right now, but there is a ton of data on our website and actually just a brand new data catalog that was just recently sent out on the crops from 2022 that our marketing team did a, and, and agronomy team did a fantastic job putting together that explains all of this in, in the actual product efficacy uh, going forward. So with that, we'll jump into carbon now. And, and I'm gonna keep this uh, to about 30 minutes, everybody. So we'll have plenty of times for question, for question and answer, but here we go. So starts with the biologicals. How do we get it done? Research, 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 university, contract research, anything that you can think of as through research is what we've done. And that's very important. We started with our main biologicals and those would be one, two, three, maybe four species to begin with. And now it's come to the fact that we can start to mix and match and play depending on how we want to uh, influence this specific operation. So the biologicals are, cr are, are crucial because they are the gateway to getting into something that most folks would typically be not accepted into. You know, when you go back and talk about additionality or you talk about practice changes, if you have been, in, have you, have, if you have incorporated a practice change for X amount of years, then you have to incorporate something else because that cannot, not, that cannot qualify you to get into the next carbon program. So Locus's benefit here is the fact that our products are now a practice change. Okay, but it had to start with the data from the products themselves. And that's very important and very key. When I, when I mentioned methodology and I mentioned data proving and I mentioned Vera and CAR, all this had to be done through them. We could not be where we are to where we are now without everything that's been done in the past. So when you can actually incorporate something that's going to enhance the activity in your soil through beneficial biologicals of beneficial microbes, increase the performance of your soil, which increases the performance and profitability of the crop being grown, and you can do it through a simple product and get paid at the same time, it's hard to find a, 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 a losing system here. And that's why we have, uh, we've been so successful in our first year of, of enrollees. So with that, I need, to, I need to make sure that everybody understands that we're not doing this alone. Okay, and this is this is a big key part of why our success has been so uh, prevalent in the past year is that Locus is the product, Carbon Now is the is the is the program, and a new or blue source, which was their previous name, is our market. All new does is sell carbon credits. That's very unique. We do not take in the carbon credits or the carbon uh, the, the credits that have been sequestered. A new does that work on behalf of the grower. Locust provides the product. Carbon Now is the system that the grower then gets involved with. And then a new does everything on the backside to make sure that that grower is being paid. So what's really unique is that when you see payment come across in a bank statement, it does not come through Locust. It comes directly from the market. So our fingers and our hands have not been touched, have not been in the middle of it as it goes back and forth through that, that initial trade process but you have to have a carbon credit based system at the end to um, complete that exchange. And that's a big part of this. So 
what I want to what I want under people to understand is that we 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 want this to be as transparent as possible. And to do that, you have to do that through partnerships. So whether it's soil sampling, whether it's the soil analysis through Regen Ag Labs, the gold standard of the Haney through the PLFA, any of those uh, any of those tests that you may be running currently on your farm or through Arva Intelligence, which is your data collection and our data partner to make sure everybody's protected, as well as they have to send everything through Vera to make sure that it, we're keeping on keeping our toes on, as well as we're keeping ourselves in check with the market, too. So I just want everybody to understand that Locust is not trying to do this by themselves. We have a niche, we have a stream, we have a line that we have to sit in, but we also know that it takes strategic partners and, and people that... Uh, people that are much more um, experienced in specific sectors to make this ship function, this, this ship uh, work. So this is, this is a crucial part of why we do what we do. And I'm more than happy to, uh, again, to talk to, to others about these specific partnerships outside of this, this meeting itself. But I just want folks to see this visually before we move through. So how does it work? What sets us apart, right? So we've already talked about it a little bit, but the, the products are the name of the game. Right. We're going to we're going to get people signed up, which takes about two to three minutes. It's all done through our website. We're going to identify the fields that we want to enroll. And that's that's very important because it's, a, it's not an all or nothing thing. And, and I think I've been asked that question at least a thousand times. No, this is not part of this. That's not a requirement of what we do here. We want to enroll the fields that you feel are best for your operation that are either already done transitioning or in that transition period from a, from a more conventional system to regenerative system, or those that have been a regenerative system their entire time that they've been in existence. Um, point in fact, I have a grower that we enrolled here this, this past year that's had a field in no-till since 1942. And I think we are the only program in this world that could probably say that we've enrolled a grower that's had no-till ground for 19, since 1942. And that's a pretty pretty cool feather we can put in our cap because of the, the power that we bring through our Carbon Now program and the Locust Biologicals. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we get in touch with you as soon as you sign up. And I've seen uh, the 48 hours is probably a, a little bit long. Most of my team, uh, the, the customer specialist team, they're in, they're in touch with the grower within a few hours. And that's also a part of, of what sets us apart. There's a lot of uh, more digital-based help in the industry where the sheets are sent out and then you have to fill them in at your convenience. We're actually going to come see you. We want to sit down with you. We want to go through your operation if that's, if that's your, your objective. We want to make sure that we have a hand to hold through this entire process because data is by far the worst part. And if you've been in the carbon market at all, you understand that because there is tons of data required. But that's why we have an on in-field, boots-on-the-ground team that does this every day, no matter what. This is what they specialize in. So once we get those things done, we'll have somebody that's specifically assigned to you. You will have one point of contact. You will make sure that the data is sent in. We'll make sure that it's done correctly. We, we can either get it done digitally or through handwritten-based uh, systems. Insurance would be a great, a great option. JD Ops, Climate View, Field View, any of those pieces, we can either direct link into those programs. Or again, we can come out and do it ourselves with you. So once this is once this is completed, there's minimal farmer time required, which is also a big part of this. You guys have a thousand things going on every single day. So if we can take something off of your shoulders and do it for you and just make sure it's correct at the back end, that's our ultimate goal. Once that's all completed, everything is sent to Arva in a new, which is then also approved. Now I need to go back for just a second. We have something in our program called control fields. Control fields are extremely crucial to the verification side as well as the quality of the credits that are produced. Control fields mean that when we sign up these fields or you sign up these fields, that field stays in the same system that you already have it in, but it does not get locust product because we need to make sure that we are doing our jobs on the verification side and the efficacy side of our products, but then also make sure that the verifiers and the, and the buyers can see it on the back end so they have more trust in the agricultural system itself. So this is something that I'm not sure many other programs, if any other programs are doing because of the, of the specific classification that Locus and Carbon now fall in. So that's a very important key to, to recognize is we must have control fields within this system. 
That's a that's a major requirement. So once that's done and we've 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 determined control fields as well as enrolled fields, then all the qualification is determined by a new. Locus Ag then pre presents the products based on the operation and their rotation that you already have in place. We're not changing that. That's not our job. We are there to provide a service as well as a product and then get you paid for the same thing. Everything at that point is then sampled. So we're going to be taking soil samples every single year for the four years that this, this program is running, okay? That's also a big piece of why we're setting ourselves apart. And soil sampling is not just running and taking two or three probes within a specific field at a random time throughout the year. When our soil sampling partners stick the probe in the soil in that specific area in that field, it will be done at the same time for the next three to four years. And that's very important to be measuring apples to apples versus oranges to grapes. We must be consistent in, in what we're looking at year over year over year. And this is all data that's provided back to the farmer. So what's this lead to? Right. So we've talked about the, the fact that you're getting soil sampling done. You're getting the work uh, completed for you on the front end through our customer success team. Well, what's it lead to? It leads to 12 bucks an acre. And that's a minimum. Because as I mentioned from the very beginning, this, this movement of carbon credit based pricing and the industry mar and the market is only going up. We start at 12, but each year as we get more and more data again through the soil sampling, performance bonuses are paid out based on the amount of carbon that is then therefore sequestered in that specific acre. And you are performing against yourself. You're not performing against Joe down the street. You're not performing against your uncle, your dad, whoever it may be. You are on your own acres, all right? So it leads out to $12 an acre every single year that you're in the program. So a total of $48 an acre guaranteed minimum, okay? Always a minimum. That means that there's tons of opportunities to the, to, the, to the top side, and that's what also makes this very important. So $9 is paid right after qualification and contract execution, and then $3 is paid after soil sampling and data collection is completed. And then at the, at the end of each year, we'll do soil, uh, we'll do, at once soil sampling is completed, that's when the performance bonuses get paid out. So it, it, it's good to know here that you're not just getting a base value, you're getting a base value based on what the market's doing right now, but then also what's gonna happen in the future. We wanna set folks up that you're gonna hit a hockey stick approach versus just a, a straight line across the board. Because if carbon credit prices go toward the, uh, you know, the 40 to 50 to $80 range, we want you to be able to take advantage of that. And that's very key. And um, I wanna make sure folks know that, that you stepping into this ring, utilizing the system that you already have in place, by just incorporating a carbon now, or excuse me, a locus ag biological, you can now take advantage of that going forward. And especially if you've been implemented or have implemented specific practices that would qualify as practice changes over, your, over the last few years or last 40 years. So simple, straightforward, unique, and very, uh, I mean, it's straight to the point. We want people to get paid, but here are the steps that have to be completed to do that. So who's eligible? We've talked about this a little bit. One thing that we wanna make sure of is, is that we have a minimum farm size of 500 acres. You know, Since we as in Locus are paying for the soil sampling, we are paying to send people out. We wanna make sure that, uh, that we have at least 500 acres to come to our doorstep so we can, uh, we, can make, we can make this process run, okay? Now, this can be 500 acres split across two different uh, rotational series, but it needs to be 500 acres enrolled. So once that's done, then we're, we're looking at target demographics, right? We're looking at who, you know, are you in a conservation, strip till, no-till growers? If you're on this call, then there's a good chance that you're in those first three bullets. So we're also looking at extremely long-term long no-till acres, which we've already spoke about. The other thing here too is that, you know, as I mentioned, there is a lot of transition, hap transition happening in the industry, and we want those folks as well. You know, if you're in that transition period, we want to help you enhance that transition. We want to help. We want to enhance helping going from a conventional till to a minimal till, minimal till to conservation, conservation to no-till. These are things that can help speed up that process through simplistic actions and um, just operational efficiencies. If you've already par participated in a CSP, EQIP, or other conservation programs, you're still eligible. We call that stacking the deck. If you're already taking advantage of some of those things, great. Let's add right into it because as we mentioned, we're voluntary, not compliance. So 
as long as there is no money being paid on that acre that is monetizing the carbon that is being taken out or put into the soil and then put into the market, you're able to stack as many things on this as you want to. So don't let that, uh, let, that, let that take away from your interest as well. We're looking at large landowners. We're looking at land management companies. We're looking at just direct to grower. You know, most of our, uh, I'm not going to say this out loud because, you know, marketing might, uh, might yell at me, but, you know, we've had some of the most, most success from a grower to grower conversation. We want to make sure folks understand that, that we've made people successful. And that success leads to additional conversations, which leads to additional conversations. So this is very important, very crucial that we've made a lot of growers in multiple, multiple states financially successful as well as operationally successful, which is a, a dual whammy. And uh, we're very proud of that of that system and, and the fact that we've, you know, we've paid out over $2 million so far this year, uh, excuse me, in 2022, and that number will be staggering by the end of 2023. So this is a this is a big deal, and we want to make sure folks know that uh, that 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 you've got a partner in this moving forward. <clears throat> so a couple of dates to be thinking about and the immediate opportunity. So our spring crop enrollment is is the cutoff date of February eighteenth of twenty twenty three. Now that means we need to have you enrolled, and we need to be having your data coming to us by the eighteenth of February. So if that is all done and we can get all the questions answered, we can get all the grower um, issues out of the way, any, any uh, discrepancies, any of those things that might come up as we're incorporating data, we can get your contract executed and you get your first payment within the spring of 2023. You do not have to wait until 2024. This is the, this is the point of getting you involved and getting you involved quickly. Now, this is just that initial payment. You'll continue to get payments throughout the year based on your rotation and the rotation of the crops that you have in place right now. So we'll have another enrollment date cut off in the fall, but this is the most pertinent one right now. Um, and we're more than happy to, to, uh, to take offline calls and meetings with whatever, whichever you may need, as well as um, we will be in St. Louis next week at the No-Till Conference and happy to uh, take one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations after a, a small tech talk that we're going to do there on the 10th as well. So the time is, is quickly coming upon us, but um, with the speed of which our team can move, you might be surprised how fast this can get done. Um, and that's what, uh, that's what also makes this, uh, this program and uh, process very, uh, very unique. So I want to just recap real fast before we jump into question and answers. Um, not every farming program is created equal. And I hope that I have, uh, I have stated some of that today and, and given you some of the background of why that's specific in, in nature. But if you're simple, profitable, and secure, you can, then become to you can then start to break down some of the challenges that have been created in the carbon market industry as a whole from, uh, from, from its very, uh, very initial beginning. And if, you can able, if you're able to boost yields, enhance your nutrient uptake, enhance the nutrients and fertility that you're putting out there every year, supercharge your carbon sequestration, as well as make a performance bonus, you're, you're really not losing. And I, again, I, I've played in this industry and I've worked in this industry for so long. And, and I've seen so many things happen that were promised and never delivered. And, and I just want everybody to know that, that this is happening and it is being delivered and it is simple. It is profitable. And, and it is secure because we know data and we know that data is very, uh, uh, it, it's very important to a lot of people. And we wanna secure that. We wanna make sure that, that we have all the partners in place to, to get you from point A to dollars and cents in your pocket, as well as more yield on the field, as well as all the things that we spoke about today. This is our passion, this is our drive, and this is what we do. And, and we're not a big team. We're, we're, we're really not, but we're extremely good at what we do. And, and I just want folks to realize and understand that. So bottom of the site, bottom of the page, broad eligibility, as we've already stated, and with minimal practice change, meaning use a locus biological, okay? They are approved as a practice change, which is the only product in the industry that has that check mark. I'll state that again, only product in the industry that has that check mark. That's because of the power of what biologicals can do, but not just any biologicals, specific biologicals that are utilized to this, the fact of increasing photosynthesis, which increase carbon sequestration, which increases yield on the field. Really, really important to understand that. 
We're open to farmers who aren't eligible for other programs. I, 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 uh, I understand that this is, a, this is a huge issue in this industry and uh, we welcome everyone with open arms. And that's a large, uh, that's a large point of, of, of why we've been so successful. Um, I won't, I won't name of all the, all the, the folks that are out there that we've converted, but it's, 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 the list is growing every single day. And that's a, that's a, that's a attributing factor to, uh, to why we've done what we've done. And also there's no enrollment cost. So you get in, you get paid, you utilize a locus ag based product, you get your soil sampled, you get money. That's how it goes. So don't overthink it. Don't make it too complicated. Let's let's break it down. Let's make it uh, as simple as possible. So in the case that you would like to check your eligibility, we've created this super sweet looking little QR code here. Props to my marketing team again. You can either scan this or you can go to the website on the left hand side. There are farmer testimonials out the wazoo. There are uh, watch. You can watch a bunch of videos as well as there's a bunch of frequently asked questions. And one of those that, uh, that we put together is the top 10 questions to ask when you're entering a carbon net or a carbon based program. And this took a lot of research and a lot of time and a lot of uh, polling and, and talking to growers across the country and you know, what are they facing and, and why is it working? Why is it not working? And this is just a broad document for you to read and, and, and soak in and, and understand that there are others asking the same questions and that's okay. And that's why we're here to, uh, to help answer those questions. So, there's tons of resources on that site. And um, uh, again, a big shout out to our marketing team and agronomy team for getting it all up there for everybody to see, to see excuse me, and the Carbon Now team to making sure that it is, is straightforward and, and farmer friendly and, and all the pieces that uh, can be utilized. So, okay, Noah. All right, Travis, great stuff there. Yeah, we have a lot of questions pouring in. We'll try to get to them all. Uh, first one is, are you working with dealers or directly with farmers? Uh, we have a, a broad network. Fantastic question, by the way. So we drew, we go direct to grower or we work through distribution. Um, as I mentioned, we are a small team and uh, that's, that's part of our superpower. We want to work with folks who are trusted in the industry, whether it be small retail ag locations or direct to grower or uh, even through some larger distribution channels. But um, just, just know that we're just over a year into this thing and, and we've made great progress in, in all three phases. But I'm more than happy to come sit down at your at your dinner table or sit on the back of the pickup with you, or we can use your trusted advisor that may be a retail ag salesman as well. All right. Ben says, for other carbon programs we've tried out, it's taken forever to enter in data, repeating info across many fields. Do you have a good website to make this easier or some APIs with Climate Field View or My John Deere? Uh, we have APIs with John Deere Ops, SeedSense, Apex, Climate View, Field View, um, uh, there's like 10 of them, I believe that we have, and as well as our customer service folks do that work for you. So as long as you can provide the legals, as well as uh, where your fields are located, the names of those fields and point us where the data is, we can incorporate that data. So you're, you're speaking down our path right now. We want, we want to turn that, what I would classify as an 80 hour job into about a two hour job. And that's, that's what we do every single day. Ed, Ed wants to know if uh, university or extension service research farms can become eligible qualified customers. Uh, very good question. I will, uh, I will get back to Ed on that one. That's, that's a fantastic question. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll get back to him on that one. That's a really good one. Gotcha. All right. We have a question from Robert. He said, he asks, uh, who does sampling? What kind of test and does producer pay for it? Also, is there a minimum field size? I think you answered that one, 500 acres, right? Yeah, 500 acre total operation size. Total. Field size can be any size they need to be. So if it's two acres or a thousand acres, that's fine. Um, so we're going to be utilizing third-party soil sampling partners to do that. So I mentioned Heartland on that one slide because they, they handle a large breadth of it for us here in Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas. Um, but all of it is done through third-party soil sampling uh, entities. We do not take the samples and nor does the grower pay for that. Locust pays for those samples. So every single year, they're going to get a bulk density sample and a soil organic carbon sample. Uh, we have other, uh, we have other um, soil, soil sampling analysis that we can run uh, that would be at grower cost, but no matter what, they're gonna get those for. And actually we're working on some newer exciting things here in the future. Um, 
that I can have a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation after this as well. Um, so if you're looking for a way to utilize having boots or tires on the field, you know, pulling samples already. And if you have somebody that only you trust to pull those samples, we can work directly with them to get those done because that may be a cost savings for you as well. They're already having that soil sampling crew out there year over year over year over year, but that's on our cost. Does land have to be owned or can it be rented ground? It can be owned, leased, or rented as long as the actual landowner is aware that you are entering a carbon program because carbon is, is technically a mineral right. So you are monetizing something coming off of that acre. Now, it doesn't cost the landowner anything, and it doesn't cost the leasee or the renter anything as well. It's all a conversation between you and that actual landowner and or vice versa. But if you are part or if you are landowner and operator, then there are some fairly strategic values and increased values for you in the future, too, uh, as the program moves forward. Gotcha. All right. This next one might be a little hard to answer off the top of your head, but you might maybe could share some perspective. Um, someone wants to know, could could you share some on-farm strip strip trial yield data for those different products or are any trials still ongoing? Yes. So what I can do, and if it's okay with you, Noah, uh, I can send you our data catalog that we just released that gives you um, data from 11 different states, uh, 66 different trials. Um, that would be corn, beans, wheat, canola, um, dry beans, cover, or uh, clovers, tomatoes, peppers, the whole thing in between. So right now, off the top of my head, I don't have my data sheet pulled up, but we're showing about an average of six to seven bushels on corn, uh, three and a half to four bushels on beans, uh, three and a half to seven bushels on wheat, um, and anything in between. And these are these are multiple year running trials, and it's all done university and CRO. Dave wants to know who or what entity makes the determination of locust products being approved as a practice change? Yep, so that would have been done through Vera. So when we collected data through our university-based systems, all that data had to be then presented to Vera for verification and methodology at the same time. So again, it's all out of our hands. We present it and they say yes or no. Once that was done, it had to be put through a peer-reviewed study. And that took quite a while to get done, but it was, again, it was passed through uh, multiple layers of verification outside of Locus's breath, all done third party. Gotcha. A lot of, uh, lot of questions coming in from the audience. Here's another one. Have past performance results indicated that a particular crop does best in terms of increased yield? Uh, in yield as in bushels, I'm guessing is what we're stating. Yeah, um, I would guess, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of our focus in the row crop side has been corn, beans, and wheat. And, you know, we've been very consistent in that. Now, one, one crop that we have seen a lot of response in is, is cotton here recently. Um, we have something in cotton that is producing a, a large amount of lint yield per acre uh, over competitors, as well as just overall farmer practice, you know, normal farmer practice. But, you know, our biggest focus has really been around corn, beans, wheat, um, and a few other things. So, we want to get the biggest crops and make sure those were, those were successful. And then we move into others as we move forward. Got a question from Chad here. He wants to know what percentage of the enrolled acres must be the control acres? That's 15%. 15%. Got it. Um, let's see. Will you have a booth at Soil Health U in Salina, Kansas on January 18th or 19th? Salina, Kansas. Salina. Um, I we mispronounced are registered. That one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. That's the first time I've heard that. Um, we will be out there. Uh, we should have a booth. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Mark Mark has a lengthy one here. He, he has some good questions here. He says, I'll read this word for word. He says, it seems Land Lakes, Corteva, Indigo are all setting up a division. How competitive will this market get? What about pasture land? I'm from Oklahoma and I could see all the tribal land enrolling. Do you think there will be enough cover crop seed for the future market? What about the small producer, 100 to 200 acres? He says, uh, thanks. And he says, good meeting. So Mark's a fan. That's, that's, those are some really good questions. Okay, so um, I'll start with the competitive landscape. Uh, yes, competition is everything. I mean, you, you mentioned three big ones there uh, without Bayer, without Cargill without uh, all those big entities that are currently in, car I mean, there, there are so much competition in this, it's, it's unreal. 
And that's everybody, every little piece of that competition has something different. Okay. And to, to, to give you an idea, that's, that's why we do what we do is because we have worked with folks that have been in, in each of those programs, plus a bunch more that we haven't even listed today that are currently functioning in carbon. Now that tells you that even, even with a competitive nature, it, simplistic approaches can then allow for more execution as well as success in other programs like carbon now outside of those ones you just mentioned. Um, as far as the cover crop side, you know, I, uh, I know, I know, uh, I know two of the largest cover crop companies in the world right now, they're struggling to get inventory because of the, the, I wouldn't call it a fad, but I'd say the movement towards utilizing more cover crops in a specific rotation. But with that comes education. So just because something sounds great doesn't mean that it's always going to be the best thing without understanding how to use it. So there are more and more growers that have figured that out, and maybe they're keeping a, a bin set aside for some bin run seed, maybe just rye or trit or oats or you know, maybe a clover or um, something like that that I think will be utilized more and more that we don't even hear about right now, but I think that's coming. Um, but I, I do think that cover crops are probably one of the easiest things to implement, and it will strain the market for a little bit until we figure out better ways to produce more with better genetics, better varieties, different things like that. Um, as far as the pasture land side, that's something that we have uh, we focused on. We haven't launched anything yet, but we understand that is a massive part of the industry. Um, I mean, I live right here in the Flint Hills. Grass is everything. Cattle are everything here. And that's something that uh, I think this market has yet to take advantage of or, or strategically get in the middle of, but something that we would like to work towards here in the future as well. So did that answer all of them? Uh, yeah. You, well, you said what about the small producer, 100, 200 acres, but 500 acres minimum, right? Yeah. So so what I would say there is, yes, we'd like to shoot for 500 acres. And and I think that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, specifically if uh, if we're talking uh, 200 acres in Northern Idaho or 200 acres in South Central Kansas. Uh, we want to make sure that we give uh, time and effort to everybody that wants to try to do this. And if there's things that we can do to make that to make that transition happen, then that's what we'll exhaust all options. But we'd like to shoot for 500 acres um, to start with. Okay. All right, we'll get to Troy's question here. He says, in regards to the 500 acre minimum, does acreage devoted to silvopasture count? Uh, it can. Yes, uh, that'd be we'd have to look at that pretty closely. But but yes, we could we could look at something like that. Okay. Uh, are you working in Nebraska? You're, you're yes. all over, right? Yes. We're in the middle 26 states plus anywhere that you could think of. Um, we've had enrollments from Georgia to Alabama to Tennessee, Kentucky, Kansas, all the way to the West Coast. What about outside the country? Uh, currently, carbon now is not available outside the country, though Locust as a whole ha is, is in process of, of some international work in specific countries. Gotcha. All right. We have about uh, another 10 minutes here. A lot of questions still pouring in. Mike says, I noticed grain sorghum has not been mentioned on your products. Is that eligible? Yes, it is. It is 100%. Okay. Does a landlord- We classify that as the same, same concept as corn right now. Got it. Got it. Does a landlord need to sign a four-year contract or just the operator? Just the operator. There are specific forms that we have that can be utilized as a draft document between for the, the agreement between the grower and or the operator and the landowner. But if you already have a, an agreement in place, it just needs to state that you are entering the Carbon Now program for the four years to make sure everybody is aware of, of the dollars and cents being exchanged. Outside of that, we have no we have no part in it. No money flows from us. It's all between the grower and the uh, the operator or the landowner and the operator. All right. Uh, are your products seed treatments or soil or foliar treatments and their per acre cost? Sure. Uh, all of our row crop products, besides ones that maybe we would put through a pivot, are all a dry talc and graphite based product that we put right on the seed. It is applied either at planting or just before planting. You can utilize it with your regular talc or graphite application, um, but it's, it's utilized at a very small amount. And uh, if there are opportunities to put product through a, a pivot or a ground or yeah, ground irrigation or fertigation, we can utilize that too, um, as uh, we have liquid products and dry. But most of the time, if we can get something on the seed that's just simply a dry powder, we can take care of everything in one a one stop shot, and we don't have to worry about plugging filters or screens or any of those things as well. 
I think you had a, a slide explaining this next one, but what practice needs to be done to collect acre payments? I think you covered uh, that. Utilize a, utilize a locust ag product. As long as you are not full conventional till, you know, that's a big part of it. If you're already in that transition period, great. Or if you already have implemented everything, great. It's just utilizing that locust ag based product. <clears throat> okay, I think I've covered all the questions I see right now in the Q&A panel. If you have any last minute ones you wanna get in, uh, now would be the time to do that. And then you know, a lot of people asking for your your contact information. They seem <laughs> interested in talking to you. Um, is there a good email address or? Yep, you can uh, you can put it down as tcraft at locusfs.com. That's locusfs as in fermentation solutions.com. And if you shoot me an email, then I can uh, I can give you a call directly or uh, which whoever's on this attendee list, we can send out a blanket email with just a recap to Noah and uh, get everybody direct contact details as well. And again, I'll be at, I'll be in St. Louis next week too. So don't, don't be afraid to come shake my hand, kick me in the shin, whatever you need. Uh, happy to talk to you. Yeah, looking forward to that. Next week at the uh, National No Tillage Conference in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Great, the great city of St. Louis. That's right. Um, <laughs> Okay, a couple of last minute questions coming in here. How well does the seed treatment adhere to the seed? Does it do well with air planters? Uh, very well. Uh, when you mix talc and graphite together, uh, you create with that seed a negative and positive bond. And that allows for a really nice, unique sticking mechanism. And you can, you can visibly see it on the seed itself uh, with very little left in the box, if any, as well as um, the, low, the usage rates are extremely low. Um, so again, that's, it's all based on your operation, but we've had more and more compliments this year that machinery and operation machinery worked uh, even better. No skips, no doubles, more of a smooth process um, versus you know all the other things that could happen. So uh, it adheres very, very well. Are you connected with the team for mining? Uh, I am not, but I can get that person to that person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Anna wants to know if you can go back to the slide with the QR code by any chance so people can get to the website. Boom, there it is. That was quick. Hey, I tried at least once. Yeah, the, the QR codes, you see there, you see those everywhere now. It's, I know. it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, who confirms the matter of additionality, you or your third party providers? Uh, that's our third party. So, we, we, again, we present everything. We present the soil sampling methodology. We present the product methodology. We present the data collection and transmission data methodology, but everything has to be confirmed outside of our, our system. Got it, got it. Uh, someone wants to know if you can give your email one more time. Sure. <laughs> tcraft, T-K-R-A-F-T, like the cheese, at locusfs.com. And I, I apologize. I should have put it on the screen. Oh, no, that's fine. And, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll wrap things up now. Um, and a reminder, this presentation was recorded. Um, so if you missed something or you want to go back and watch one of the slides, you'll, you'll receive an email within 48 hours from now of the recorded presentation. So you can be on the lookout for that if you want to share it with someone you work with, the friends, family, or anyone else. Uh, Travis, great stuff today. We really appreciate you joining us. And to everyone for tuning in and the, those great questions. So on behalf of Travis, Locus Ag, and Strip Till Farmer, thank you for joining us for today's digital demo. Feel free to reach out and let us know what you thought of the live event and if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in future webinars. And Travis, any last words before we let you go? No, nothing here from me. Just thank you for everybody that's on the call and, and Noah, your, your, uh, your amazing work. And um, I really appreciate what, uh, what everybody's done here and Everybody that's 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 currently operating right now, you guys are navigating some fairly choppy waters. So um, just keep on keeping on, and uh, I look forward to meeting each of you if, if possible and, and helping any way with way we can. So yeah, it was great having you, and uh, thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>